Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. I love this time of year. You know, we've all had so much fun this fall watching college football and the NFL and now it's time for the big game. And you know, I always have some new recipes that I want you to try when we're getting ready for that occasion. We've done so many Southern ingredients so far this season. Pecans, bacon, apples, sweet potatoes, peanut butter, molasses, buttermilk, apple cider, so today is going to be no exception. When I think about a great southern snack, one of the first things that comes to mind is potato chips. But have you ever cooked with them? Well today I'm going to be representing Low Country Kettle Potato Chips. And the owners, Andrew and Clayton, are going to join me later and we're going to be making food with all of their products during the show today. It's going to be so much fun. So first we're gonna start with the potato chip chicken salad casserole. It is so easy to put together, has their potato chips in it, you're gonna love this recipe. Then we'll do an oven fried chicken strip that we coat the outside of the strip with the potato chips, really fun. And then finally, what about a kitchen sink cookie that has everything in it, including potato chips? So we've got a lot to do, let's get started on that chicken salad casserole. You know, having people over to watch the game is always fun, even if it's just your family. And we have had the best time coming up with recipes with Low Country Kettle potato chips. And certainly I want you to go to their website. This is a small batch craft potato chip. Comes in seven different flavors. We've created recipes today that we felt like matched up with a great chicken salad casserole recipe that we could add that as the southern ingredient. So we've had a lot of fun getting this show together today. All right, so there's several steps to this. I started by spraying my nine by 13 pan with some pan spray. Now I've got cream of chicken soup in the bowl. I'm gonna add to that my Hellman's mayonnaise. And this is just the, you know, the mixture that kind of holds all of this together. We've got yellow mustard and Worcestershire sauce. So, so far so good on all of these ingredients that make this a great chicken salad casserole dish. So we're gonna whip this together and then I'll put half of that into the pan. So the flavor that we're using today for this casserole is the Carolina Reaper. And you know, it's just got such a great flavor. And I'm, I'm just a fan of a potato chip anyway, but this one is gonna be really good in with all the chicken. So let me put half of this in the casserole dish and spread that around. All right, so then I've crushed up the potato chips in the bag. So you don't even have to take them out of the bag to do that. Just make a little opening in the top and just smash them around. All right, so now I'm gonna add to the crushed potato chips here some slivered almonds. I'm gonna set that aside because that's gonna go on top. So now I've got more of the Carolina Reaper potato chips. I'm gonna put half of those on the top of this mayonnaise and mustard combination with the chicken soup. All right, now I've got rotisserie chicken that I've cut up. I'm gonna put half of that in here. And you know, you can either make a big casserole or you could make a couple of small ones and put one of them in the freezer. So this is a great way you can cook the chicken yourself, but if you're already in the grocery store, just go over to the deli and get one of those rotisserie chickens to use. All right, I've hard cooked some eggs and chopped those up. I'm gonna put half of that on here. Those will be good. Really does have all the ingredients that go in a regular chicken salad. Got some Vidalia onion, some more slivered almonds. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, don't you just love everybody's version of chicken salad and everybody's version of a chicken casserole? So I cannot wait for you to try this. And even the guys, when y'all meet them later today, they are so excited about the recipes that we've created using their product. All right, so now I'm gonna put the rest of this mixture on the top. So it makes a really hearty, big casserole dish. And, you know, honestly, if you've got other things, 
you know, you can get about six to eight servings out of this or a little bit more if you've got salad and some other side dishes to go with it. So just spread this. And now I'm gonna put the other half. And I've got my oven preheated to 350. So I will get this finished up and when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on the little chicken tenders that are just coated with another flavor of potato chip that you're gonna love. So come back with me, I'll keep working and we'll come back together in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody. If you're just joining me, we're having a potato chip party. You know, all season we've been doing Southern ingredients. We've had so many different wonderful ingredients, but I thought, you know, one of my favorite snacks is potato chips. We found this company in Charleston, Low Country Kettle Potato Chips. They have seven different flavors. All are just remarkable. And this one is the spicy pimento cheese. So honestly, between pimento cheese and potato chips, you can't get more Southern. Andrew and Clayton are gonna be joining us in just a little bit. But they've been so excited that we have created recipes with their potato chips as an ingredient and not just a snack. So we have in the oven, the potato chip chicken salad casserole, and it is smelling so good in here. And now we're getting ready to do a potato chip coated chicken strip. You know, everybody loves a chicken strip. Nobody will have had anything like this. I'm kind of counting on that. So let me tell you what I've gone ahead and done. I got my parchment paper on my cookie sheet. I've got my oven preheated to 400. I went ahead and got the tendon out of the chicken tenderloin. So that's an easy process. You just wanna take a fork, a paper towel, and you're just gonna, you got to kinda of hang on to the tendon to get it to pull out of the chicken um, tenderloin. So those are all ready to go. And I've got all of my ingredients out here. I've got my flour that I'm gonna to add to that. Their actual pimento cheese seasoning, which is amazing. So I'm gonna add that into my flour mixture. I've got garlic powder and black pepper. So let's just mix this together. And you know, when you're doing frying, generally speaking, you do wet, dry, and then fry. But we're oven cooking these, and we're gonna end up with the dry being the crushed up pimento, spicy pimento cheese potato chips. All right, I've got three eggs that I've beaten. I'm gonna add in some half and half to that. And then I just crushed the potato chips in the bag, just so you're gonna be able to tell for sure that they're potato chips. All right, so I'm gonna take one of my tenderloins and just get that coated in the flour. Now I'm gonna dip it in the egg wash mixture. And then finally, in the potato chips. This is the part I love. You know, and for all of you pimento cheese lovers, you've got to try this potato chip. And you know, when you go online to their website to order, you can do a variety pack and try lots of the different flavors. So then I've put my rack on top of this sheet pan so that you're gonna get a nice, even cooking all the way around. So let's get another one going here. You know, you could put on some gloves and do it that way, or you could just use your fingers. The thing I like about tongs is that you can kind of keep a little bit of distance and maybe keep this as easily done as possible. And this kind of goes on there really well too. All right. And I didn't put all the chips in at once, just so they'll stay crisp since you're doing several of these. And these are just gonna go on there so great. All right, so I'm gonna keep working on this. And when we come back, you know, why is it that the dessert is always the part that I love the most, but a everything but the kitchen sink cookie is gonna include potato chips today. So come back with me and we'll keep going. See you then. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. 
You know, chicken salad is a real southern staple, and you can serve it so many different ways. But today, I've got some really great presentation ideas that I think you'll love. Turn chicken salad into an easy to eat hors d'oeuvre by scooping a small amount into a baked phyllo shell, garnished with a small sprig of parsley. One way I love to display chicken salad is in a martini glass. Place a leaf of lettuce in the bottom of a glass and a scoop of chicken salad on top. Serve with a fork for an easy upscale presentation. A crescent roll cone is fun and it's a great activity to do with your children and grandchildren. To make the cone, roll eight sheets of foil into small cone shapes. Lay out a sheet of crescent dough and cut lengthwise into eight one-inch strips. Wrap each strip around a foil cone starting at the bottom. Bake on an ungreased baking sheet for seven to nine minutes. Allow it to cool completely before removing the mold. Pipe or scoop your favorite chicken salad right into the middle. Chicken salad can be used in so many ways. Try one of these ideas to switch it up. Start free today at TaxLayer.com. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Vera's Corner. You know, there can't be enough recipes for chicken salad, so I hope you'll try some of those for the big game as well. All right, so on to the potato chip party. We're getting ready to do everything but the kitchen sink cookie, and we're gonna put potato chips in this recipe too. So I've got my butter creaming. I'm gonna add in my granulated sugar and my brown sugar. And so essentially all you're doing here is mixing it up until it's thoroughly blended, light, and fluffy. All right, I'm gonna put my vanilla into my egg. Let that be just a few more minutes. This is just a really great cookie. It, it looks like a gigantic cookie, but we're gonna do a process at the end that I think you're gonna like as well. All right, so let's add in the egg and the vanilla. All right, so now I've got baking soda that I'm gonna add into my flour along with some kosher salt. Just mix that together. And you know, I always love to use that 1 4th cup measuring cup just to keep this from going all over the kitchen when I'm making dough. But this is a great recipe that you can also get your young person in the kitchen with you too. Um, because some of the techniques, like what I'm doing here, is always interesting. And then when you take it off the mixer and start adding some of the ingredients in, maybe that's when a really young child or grandchild can assist as well. All right, so we've had several great recipes. This particular recipe, and I know I cannot wait for y'all to meet Andrew and Clayton. They are going to flip out over these recipes today. This uses their sea salt potato chip. So this has, you know, another, you know, sweet, salty, which is so popular right now in terms of desserts. All right, so let me mix that. And then we're gonna take it off the mixer to add in the rest of the ingredients. All right. So I'll come back and scrape that in just a minute. Let's get these added in. All right, so we've got chocolate chips, and you can use milk chocolate or semi-sweet. We've got bits of pretzels, and then we've got crushed up Heath Bar. And then I went ahead and made just a little opening in the top of the bag, and this is just the right amount for this recipe of the sea salt potato chips. And I've prepared three pans. You know, you're gonna make this almost a golf ball size dough ball to cook these. All right, so great. make sure you get all the way to the bottom when you're mixing that together. And let me go ahead and get the rest of this. You know, I know they say you're not really supposed to eat cookie dough, but some of my fondest memories are in the kitchen with my grandmother and she was the queen of getting every bit of this off the spatula or the beaters or whatever. But if there was a little bit left, I always love to sneak a bite. All right, so one of the instruments I love to use when I'm doing this is just a regular scoop. So you're looking for a golf ball size. So I'll have to finish this up during the break, 
because we want to leave plenty of time to get to know these two guys from Low Country Kettle. So come back with me. I'll have these ready to go in the oven. Welcome back everybody and I am so excited for you guys to finally meet who I've been talking about this entire show today. Andrew Trumbull and Clayton Wynn with Low Country Kettle, the best chips ever. We've had the best time today. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. and look here, y'all have walked in and it's all ready to go. You had not even had to wash dishes today. <laughs> so tell all of our viewers today how you guys got together in the first place and how this whole thing got started sure uh so you know clayton and i are from charleston south carolina so we were um working at a restaurant called the office and daughter on sullivan's island and uh clayton it's was a great a, restaurant yeah yeah wonderful restaurant so uh, clayton was a bartender there i was a front of the house manager we were at a uh, manager meeting one day and we were talking about some grab-and-go items to bring to the uh, downstairs gelateria. Someone brought up potato chips. You know, it's a good grab-and-go, easy, America's number one snack food. <laughs> For sure. Um, and, you know, at the restaurant, we always try to source as locally as possible. So everyone at the table was trying to think of, you know, a good local potato chip. We all hopped on our uh, cell phones and started Googling local potato chips, potatoes in Charleston. That's um, very familiar to me, right? This minute, you know? <laughs> and we could not find anything, kind of shockingly. Um, and that was, I think someone at the table made a joke, oh, one of us should start a local potato chip company. And that was, that was really kind of the light bulb moment. I mean, the light bulb moment, that, that's the best part, is that you never know when the idea is gonna hit. Well, where did you take it from there, Clayton? What happened after that? Well, you know, I had a small business beforehand, um, Andrew, has a culinary skill. I had a little bit of business experience and a business degree from Coastal Carolina. Um, so he came to me and asked me if I was interested. So uh, we went to the uh, local bar, had a beer and started discussing <laughs> what would be indicative of a South Carolina potato chip, let alone the low country. Mm -hmm. Mustard barbecue really oh, stood out to us that right away. Uh, spicy pimento cheese, of course, um, especially being down here in Augusta, that goes a long way. Absolutely. Um, fried pickle. You know, those are just absolutely delicious. You find them in, you know, various bars and whatnot. And Bloody Mary, those were our four flagship flavors. Mm -hmm. So we went back to Andrew's apartment with a little tabletop fryer, sliced up various potatoes, <laughs> finding which one was gonna be the right one. Uh, hand mixing each spice. We had just spices all over the countertop. And, I you know, a little it. bit of this, a little bit of that, tweaking mm -hmm. it until we just nailed it. And then that's when um, the next step happened finding out how we were going to make potato chips in mass, mm -hmm. um, which is quite a process, let me tell you that. <laughs> well, and you know, we've talked, you know, off and on today about, you know, the, the chemistry involved in all of this stuff, like which potato do you use and, you know, what flavors and how much of each of these and what particular spice do you want to be most prominent? Um, you know, if you had to name one of these chips, that's probably the most popular. You know, starting out, the spicy pimento cheese mm -hmm. was, uh, and still to this day, it's um, definitely one of our most popular flavors. Um, everyone loves a good cheesy uh, potato chip. Um, ours have a little bit of heat to them as well. Heat is, um, you know, it's been very popular. You see a lot of snack foods trying to right. compete with how hot they can get their product. Ours is not like that, but well, it does have since, a nice touch since of heat Well, since you've to started it. with that one, I'm going to kind of go out of order on the way that we prepared these dishes today. So I'm so excited. Do y'all like the way everything looks? It looks gorgeous. It looks fantastic. Um, so these chicken tenders were actually made with the spicy pimento cheese chip. Oh, wow. So we did the whole process of doing the tenderloin, dipping it in the seasoned flour, and we used some of your actual seasoned seasoning Very on cool. the tender itself to give it a little bit more flavor and then we dipped it in the the milk and the egg and then into the actual chips as the outside coating but you see how beautifully um, those worked and then the first dish we made today was a chicken salad casserole that has the potato chips in it we used the um, Carolina Ooh, Reaper right. for that one and dangerous. I mean, yeah dangerous <laughs> Hopefully not for too much. sure there is no grease here you know, and you would think with a potato chip for sure that yeah. you would end up with just oil everywhere. It had cheese in it, had mayonnaise in it. This casserole is 
absolutely delicious. It looks perfect. And then finally, these cookies, everything but the kitchen sink. Ooh. And so if we're gonna, you know, we're gonna throw some potato chips into <laughs> something. You can't go wrong with chocolate chips and toffee bits and pretzels. I mean, that worked out so beautifully. So certainly I want all of you to go to these guys' website and check it out. You know, for me and for this season, talking about Southern ingredients and making relationships, you know, y'all are going to see them again because we have just really enjoyed using their product. The packaging is so incredible, but honestly, throw the bag away and just sit there and eat those chips. They are so good. And, you know, I certainly also want to point out Hester and Cook today. So be sure to check them out too with all of their seasonal things. And remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Thank you guys for joining us today. Safe travels back Thanks to Charleston. So and we'll see you guys next week.